Hi everyone, my name is Kalina. Welcome to Eye of the East Coast. We're really excited today to have Judica Illis on today, and she's going to be talking about fairies and their connection to the Celtic saints. Hi Judica, how are you doing? Hi Kalina, I'm happy to be here, thank you. We're really excited to have you. Uh, how's your day going? So far, so good. Okay, good. <laughs> well, you are the high point so far. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I'm glad. Um, it, we, I'm excited about the topic today, but before we get into fairies and the Celtic saints, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your work? Sure. Um, my name is Judica Illis, and I, I, I have been a student of the magical and metaphysical arts since I was a child because I have a much older sister who brought home material, and I just stole everything from her. So I, I've been doing this much of my life, and I just—it's it's just a wonderful topic because you can continue to learn forever. And I have been a card reader for years, and I'm an aerobic therapist. But I think I am most known. I have—I have published eight books. There, there's some more in the works. But I have published a book on magic and mysticism, and I have a book called The Encyclopedia of Mystic Saints and Sages, which has a number of Celtic and other saints, saints from many spiritual traditions, pagan saints, as well as Christian saints and Buddhist saints and Sufi saints. And I, I actually, Kalina doesn't know this, because I just found out that I, I have a book that's been very difficult to obtain for years, called the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, and, and you're actually getting my first announcement, Kalina, public announcement. Oh, that's it's, exciting! I, I, yeah, I, I just found out that it's actually up for pre-order. They've they've re-released it, and there's a large section on fairies in there. Oh. So I thought, when when you mentioned the topic, I thought this was so apropos. It was perfect. Oh, perfect! That's exciting. And for our listeners, please check out Judica's uh, books. They're wonderful. I have a lot of them. They're really, really great. They're really well done. Judica works really hard. I really recommend if you're a student Thank of you. spiritual development, please check out her work. Thank you. With that. So for um, today's topic, because uh, we're you. in Nova Scotia, Canada, and uh, fairies are very popular here, but we have a very different understanding of fairies compared to the UK or um, other parts of the world. So we're just wondering um, what your research has taught you about fairies and the Celtic saints. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I'd love to hear your understanding, actually. Sure. Fairy, you know, the word fairy has become an umbrella term. And it's something that I do, you know, there's a large section in the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft because there are all these connections, there are connections of fairies to saints, but also connections of, fairy, of fairies to witchcraft traditions. Fairies, I mean, the word, the, the English word fairy is applied as a category to all this big group of sacred beings from all over the world who have some things in common, um, but are, are also different. So you have fairies, I mean, the two criteria tend to be fairies as nature spirits, particularly female, but also male spirits, who are associated with, are we still connected? Yeah, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes, I just got a little message, yes. Um, you know, we... we they're associated with wild nature, and particularly with water and wells. And you know, we have the same for the well, but also with um, with feminine power, so that kind of raw feminine power. You know, childbirth fairies and fairies who you know, you know, lure people, lure men astray. Although if you actually read into the legends, they're they're justice spirits. They're spirits of justice. The stories, I and mean, if you know, like um. The ballet Giselle, that's I think one of the most famous reenactments, of the, you know, and, and those are Balkan fairies in Giselle. But they're, they're, they're spirits who protect women and avenge them. You know, when women are very, very vulnerable, they, they protect them in situations where there is no other justice. But the fairies that I think most of us are familiar with, and, you know, if you don't know too much about fairies, you know, beyond, you know, a Hallmark statue, I think it's the she, the Irish fairy, 
and that is the Celtic fairies of Ireland and, and the Highlands of Scotland. Um, you know, and, and she is spelled S I D H E. And they are, I think, the prototype for what many people understand to be fairies. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. Um, so, what is the connection between goddess or Saint Bridget to the fairies? I think we have to talk about well things. And well things are, you know, what is a well? A well is, you know, you have springs that, natural springs that arise from water, or from the earth, and that have been uh, typically enclosed in some fashion, whether with bricks or with stones. And they become, in addition to just being practical places to gather, you know, to get your water, because of course we need fresh water, they, they also become spiritual places. And places of... Oh, hello? People will experience water and the earth and, and, and that, whole, that whole other world. Your portals and gateways to that whole other world of... Um, you know, that, that veil between the realm of the living and the realms of of the fairies and, and the dead and oh, who knows, you know, all kinds of all kinds of beings. And this is very, very pre Christian. And people associate wealth things with Christianity, but they exist in places like Egypt, you know, in, in Muslim areas. And, you know, there 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 are wells with sacred significance in the Jewish Bible. And, you know, among all kinds of traditions and among the pre-Christian Celtic and other peoples of the British Isles, you have this tradition of sacred beings as well. And I think the most famous well thing now is Bridget. But she, be, you know, Bridget begins her, I, I shouldn't say begins because she is, I spent a lot of time with Bridget this year. It's been a very interesting spiritual year for me. I, I taught a class in Massachusetts um, in bulk on um, the many faces of Bridget because of course there's the goddess Bridget and there's Saint Bridget and there's Mama Bridget who is the voodoo manifestation of Bridget and Mother Bridget from New Orleans because she's got, you know, she's a many, many faceted sacred being. You know, who's to say that the Bridget, the goddess Bridget we know is the first? There could be other, other manifestations that we don't even know anymore. But the goddess Bridget emerges as a member of the Tuatha de Danon, you know, the daughter of the Dogza. And, you know, she's, she's a fairy queen. The Tuatha de Danon are, you know, just another name for the shape. You know, they, they, they evolve into the shape mm -hmm. as part of their evolution. And Bridget is associated with fire and rituals with fire, but there are also a tremendous amount of wealth dedicated to her. I didn't know then, that. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, one of these days I'm going to write a blog post. I've been promising people this for a long time. But if you look up Bridget's well, they are throughout, you know, throughout that Celtic backbone. Ireland and into the Highlands and the Hebrides and the Islands, um, there are all these wells that are dedicated to, and, and they are dedicated to Saint Bridget now, to Saint Reed. But the implication is that the Saint has, you know, they were dedicated to her before she was a Saint or her, her, her other incarnation. Saint Bridget is a very interesting Saint, and I think you have to. I have a concept of, of how, of canonization and the Celtic saints. Because Christian saints are different from all other saints. Other religions have saints too. But it's by popular, popular proclamation. You know, someone dies, and after they're dead, they start performing miracles, and one person tells another, and people start going to the grave, and, you know, word gets around, and you know that, oh, you know, so-and-so is producing miracles, and, and, and they have them left us being dead, and they're a saint. And that type of thing could exist in not all religions, but most. And also folk saints. There are, you know, the Trung sisters in Vietnam, 
who are, you know, heroes. They're, they're, they're nationalist heroes, but are also believed to perform healing for individuals and for the culture, regardless of religion. But early Christianity he tried to control that because, of course, they wanted, they wanted things who were ideal of the Christian behavior, as opposed to, um, you know, in, in Argentina, you have the gaucho saints, well, folk saints, and they weren't necessarily role models. You have criminal saints like um, Juan Salgado in California and in Mexico, who they have child molester in life. Wow. But in death, performs miracles of healing. And the Catholic Church, the Vatican did not want to do that, nor did the Orthodox Church. They wanted to maintain some control about who was going to be venerated. And so you develop this evolution of what canonization is. But there is an exception, and the exception of the Celtic saints. Because when the Celtic saints, when the Celtic Church is essentially absorbed into, you know, they have the son of a wiki, and they are they are absorbed into the Vatican. Their saints, the Celtic saints, are just grandfathered in. And they don't go to the saints offices. And the Celtic, the Celtic church does not necessarily pick saints the same way. In many cases, they were ancestral spirits who, after death, were venerated in all. And, and perform miracles, and they were venerated as saints. And also, possibly, you know, some some pre-Christian sacred beings were also ushered in. You have not only Bridget, but in Britain now you have a resurgence of, and maybe the first public veneration of a goddess named Ellen, Ellen of the Rose, Ellen of the Host. And there is a Saint Helen. There is a historic. Saint Helena, and she's not the same as the Saint Helen, Saint Helena, who is the mother of Constantine. This is a different woman. And there is a historical woman who is allegedly the same, but there are some you know, odd things with the years. And so, what you see under the mask of the actual woman is this primordial dear goddess, this prim- primordial, you know, pre Celtic goddess of the British Isles also associated with wild nature. And, I mean, as if there was any other kind at the time. And Bridget, you know, who is the saint? Who, because the saint Bridget and the goddess Bridget have the same feast day. They have the same dominions. They're both in charge of the same thing. They take responsibility for the same thing. The things that you would ask saint Bridget to do are the things that you would also ask the goddess to do. And so are they the same or are they different? And there's a lot of theories about this. You know, one theory is that it's just, you know, a, a, a brazen attempt to, you know, maintain veneration of the goddess. You know, you, you stick the word saint in front of her name and, and, you know, presto, we can keep veneration mm. going. Or, you know, there's a theory that that um, at, at the, her shrine in Kildare in Ireland, the god, the, whoever was the high priestess and who presumably channel the goddess. And if you read or are familiar with the fairy faith, the traditional religion of the fairies, in both the Celtic area of Europe and the Balkan area, the, the, the channeling is not dissimilar from modern African diaspora tradition. That ability to, to actually allow the sacred being to speak through the voice of the priestess. And it is possible. And they may have taken her name, or they may have assumed that whatever came out of that woman's mouth in, in certain contexts, in certain ritual contexts, was actually the voice of the goddess. And if that woman became a Christian, then, and you know, and, and if that woman, then, you know, that historical woman that people claim they knew, and she has, you know, she is not the daughter of a Dagda, she's the daughter of a Druid. And, you know, of course, the Dagda is the Druid, druid deity, but, you know, you, you can separate them if, if, if you prefer. And who, you know, many, many years ago, who, who knows? But maybe that woman is the saint, speaking in the name of the goddess, 
and ushering her people into this new era. But these worlds that were associated with the fairies are, um, you know, were now rededicated to to Bridget. There are also different wells that are merry. A lot of a lot of wells once associated with Celtic deities and the fairies are rededicated to Mary and to Anne, mm-hmm. her mother, her, you know, the, the Virgin Mary's mother. Of course, there's also the Celtic goddess whose name is so similar to Anne, and who is also a goddess of, of you know, a, a goddess who's associated with the lakes in Ireland. So who's to say? Who's to say, you know, that, that, that transitioning and that blurring of boundaries. And I think when we speak about fairies and wells and saints, we cannot neglect the well saints in Cornwall. And a lot of those saints are somewhat more obscure than Bridget. You know, Bridget's got a whole backstory. Bridget has numerous backstories. You could kind of almost pick. Versus you have saints, these early British saints. Very little is known about them other than their name. Their name in a feast day. And many of them are associated with with um, with springs and with wells. And it's hard to say in these fairy ridden areas and the pixies, the pixies, who are also, you know, uh, down the road, also you have associations with wells and water and this 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 nebulous boundary between sacred beings with very, very different with devotees from very, very different spiritual orientations. The, the, the traditions of, um, if you have ever, if you've ever gone to a well, to, you know, a wishing well, they're essentially wishing wells. It's the sacred origins of the wishing well. But if you've ever gone to, like, a, you know, one of Bridget's wells or other shrines that are associated with holy beings, you'll see that people hang rags. They make wishes or, or, or prayers, and they'll hang rags from, from the well or from the tree. Those aren't, those aren't actually Christian traditions, even if they're being done in a Christian context. Those are the old, that's the old fairy tale. Would you, um, for the listeners today, where we're talking about wells, um, is there any that you know of, any rituals or anything that you would recommend to the listeners to help them connect with the, the Celtic saints, like uh, St. Bridget or the fairies? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're slightly different. Bridget, you know, Bridget is the easiest. Bridget is a very accessible goddess, and you will find tons of information about her. I mean, I have another book, Encyclopedia of Spirits. My books are very practical. I have practical spirituality in the books. We'll tell you what kind of offerings to make and what are the feast days and what are the colors. And, you know, I, I, it, it, it's practical metaphysics. So Bridget is an incredibly popular goddess and an incredibly popular saint. And their veneration is very, very similar. So, you know, what you do for the goddess, you know, with the exception, you know, even, you know, Bridget's cloth. There's a there's a sunrise um, like a woven a woven cloth and there's a picture in my book and you'll find pictures on, on the web I mean it, it's an easy thing to find um, for purchase I I, the, I you know for everybody really I think veneration for your heart is the most important thing Bridget is associated with various days in both you know February first February second those early days of February being the most famous but she also has other feast days throughout the year. And um, I, I would make an offering and speak from your heart. That, that is what I would do for Bridget. Well, in general, the tradition is to circumambulate, which means to walk around the well, to circle it. And, you know, whether you do a diesel or a Wittershins, and with the fairy says, Wittershins is not necessarily bad. It, 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 it's just a different way of approaching reality. But circum that well and you know St. Bridget's well in, in a Christian context people will suck an ambulance on their knees when they're requesting a miracle Bridget is a healer Bridget performs miracles of healing performs miracles of fertility she bestows children when people are having trouble um, she, she's uh, the 
the matron of poets and artists and craftspeople, and it's just an incredibly powerful and benevolent goddess and fairy of, you know, there's a very, very fine line between these two things, saying, um, circumambulate, and then go, if you understand the wishing well as a secular outgrowth, oh, the wishing well is what's left of the tradition of sacred wells in many places. Make your wish. A- ask. Ask for what you need. Ask in your own language. Don't, you know, I, I always warn people, don't, don't say anything if you don't understand what you're saying, because you may actually guess what you're asking for. So make sure you're asking for what you really want. That's really you know, nice. don't, don't ask to get pregnant. Ask to have a healthy child. Because, mis- you know, miscarriage is a reality. So, you know, if you ask to get pregnant and then, and then the sacred being just leaves you, that, that's not enough. You, you want to have a healthy child. You, you want to have a healthy pregnancy. You want to be okay at the end. You know, go out what you really need. And then traditionally, you make a little offering. And in the old days, people give pins because selling pins were valuable. I mean, we, we toss them like nothing now. It's, you know, it's like the thought that they throw at you in like every fast food restaurant. They, you know, they throw like packets of salt in your, in your paper bag, but salt used to be so precious and valuable. So, you know, pins, something as simple as a silver pin, um, a, a little, a little anything. And any kind of a little gesture. Um, it is traditional to offer a gift once you have received, if and once you have received what you have requested. So when I have this healthy child, um, you know, I will name I will name her after you, Bridget. That that's always like a good, you know, because that 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 that's creating an ongoing relationship and requesting ongoing protection. You know, Bridget in particular, is because she is the matron of creative people, often the gift of an artistic project. You know, I, I will make a painting. I will I will sing a song. I will create a dance for you, something like that. You know, if and when I receive what I've asked for. And then often um, from the well, you take away. You take away a little water if it's appropriate. And, and you said, I have a lovely friend who got me... Um, the bloody water from Bridges Bridges Well in Ireland. I I have it waiting, you know. I have it here waiting for a, a, a miracle. I need. That's neat. That's really neat. And the fairies, fairies, you know, you want fairies are besieged like animals. You know, look at these poor. You know, they have no territory. And so, what you want to do is you want to create some territory. You know, if you create a home for them, they will come. So you know, leave a little bit of the garden wild. You know, put up, you know, put up some, they're like sparkly things. The thing with these relationships is the commitment. Because once they, if they answer, you, you have to continue. Mm-hmm. So you have to think of if this is what you want. Because they will answer eventually. And and then, you know, so so just make sure. Because people play a lot. You know, some people with Ouija boards, the like kids fooling around. But they're not actually expecting a response. And then they get a response and they're scared. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, oh, if I thought, what am I going to do? Um, you know, you, if, if you do something like this, you know, you should you should assume that you will actually receive some sort of a communication. You will receive contact. Mm-hmm. Just be prepared for that. That's true. Well, I tell my students um, when I'm teaching them about guardians or uh, angels or so, I always say it's like you're building up a friendship. Yeah, them. and it's you. You have to put work into the friendship. Yeah, and you, and you can't think if you're if you're going away, you know, and you won't be putting out your pan of milk. You have to tell them I'll be gone for a couple of weeks. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I haven't forgotten, but I'll be gone, and just you know, and you have to you you have to be able to communicate. Mm-hmm. It, you have to understand them as living beings, or else you get into trouble. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree with you. I know that went crazy fast. I can listen to you all day. It's really fascinating. Um, for uh, our listeners, because I know today's show went really fast, um, if they were looking to get a hold of you, to get contact, um, how can they get a hold of you on Facebook or Twitter? Hi, if you um, 
go to my website, which is my name, judicaillis.com, J-U-D-I-K-A-I-L-L-E-S.com. It will give you links to Twitter and Facebook, and, and I'm easy to get in touch with. That's awesome. And I really recommend, I know I said earlier, but please look into her work. It's Judica does wonderful work. I really recommend looking into it. Thank you so much for coming on, Judica. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Okay, before we get into the readings for September 1st to September 7th, 2004, a little information about Each Each Radio. Each Each Radio website is www.eghradio.com. Each Each is on Facebook and Twitter. Other shows on Each Each Radio is Anne's Unsigned Rock Show, Mondays at 5 p.m. Atlantic, Stephen's Unsigned Madness on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Atlantic, and Chuck's Boombox America is at 6.30 Atlantic. Uh, for information on Tracy and myself, please go to Facebook. Tracy is Reiki with a twist. For Eye of the East Coast, uh, it's on Facebook and Twitter. And mine is Kalina Psychic Readings, and I'm on Twitter too. Okay, so for the readings, starting with Aries. Okay, for next week, next week is all about major lessons. What they're making me feel is that the guardians are coming to you to give you lessons to understand more about your path. There may You may feel like you're questioning a couple of things and that's okay. What they're making me feel is you're taking back your power and saying, okay, what do I really want? And they're just saying it's okay to do that. Taurus, you may feel the energy is a little bit up in the air, not, not in a negative way, just sort of, sort of like you're sorting. They're also making me feel some of your dreams are going to go a little bit into spirit world, so you may get a dream from a loved one in spirit or a pet in spirit. Gemini, Gemini, this is a week to be still and recharge. They're making me feel it's not a time to make any major decisions, but it's a time to just gather information. For Cancers, they're making me feel there's a very positive change coming your way. They're also showing here... They're showing, okay, they're presenting energy here where it's time to plan, but they're making me feel that the changes coming your way come more clear in October. Leos, this is a, a very spiritual week. That's how they're making me feel. Uh, this is a week to kind of reflect and focus on what you need to do for you. Reiki may be good for you and also to very strong dreams. Virgos, this is a week to clear energy, any massage, acupuncture, just or even writing out frustrations. This is a week to clear your mind, to clear your energy. Libra, this is also too a week for you to clear energy. Um, the energy may be a little loud in the sense that you may be sensing other people's energy. Just keep clearing it, rake, e, massage, anything like that would be good. Scorpio, this is a week of clear communication. Really speak from your heart and your mind what you want. Um, just be aware of any gossip or any negative talk. That's, it has nothing to do with you. It's on them. Sagittarius, this is a week. What they're making me feel, this is a week to focus on childhood or people from the past. It's a time to reflect on happy memories. Also, too, they're focusing on laughing a bit more. Capricorn, they're making me feel this is a week of inspiration. Really ask yourself what inspires you. And for some reason, I can hear dancing music. So they're saying focus on dancing or learning a new dance. Aquarius, this is about divine intervention. They're making me feel that the universe may be stepping in saying, okay, this is no longer good enough, but we're going to redirect you and it will be better for you in the long term. And for Pisces, this is a week of celebration. It's just to focus and have fun. Um, and also, too, for Pisces, there's something about school or school opportunity. So that looks good. All right, everyone, thank you so much for listening to Eye of the East Coast. And we hope you join us next week. All right, take care.